Hi everybody, hope you had a wonderful Mardi Gras. Welcome into Fast Five. I'm Scott. I'm Jay. That's Jay. Yeah. Question number one. What's your biggest takeaway from Super Bowl 50? My biggest takeaway is that the Saints aren't close to playing in one. As I watch those two teams, one that made brilliant free agent moves, another that drafted extremely well, I was reminded by the 20 plus million in dead money the Saints were going to have for 2016, how poorly they've drafted, and how bad some of their free agent signings have been. My biggest takeaway is that takeaways are still the biggest statistic in football. You've got Denver, they were plus two. They got, they scored a defensive touchdown, set up the other touchdown uh, with, with a takeaway. And so it's real simple. He who gets more takeaways wins more football games. There you go. Question number two. What are realistic expectations for Raging Cajun baseball this season? Uh, I think they're going to be in the top two in the league. You know, everybody continues to forget that South Alabama was the regular season champion last year, and they've got a good part of that ball club back this year. So I don't think the Sun Belt Conference is going to be a walk in the park for the Cajuns. The other thing is, this schedule is brutal. You've got Sam Houston State coming in. The Cajuns are going to go play in the Houston College Classic. They have a weekend series with Southeastern, who's got one of the state's best pitching staffs and is picked to win the Southland Conference again this year. Plus Nichols, Northwestern, McNeese, they're all going to be good this year. Man, I'll tell you, you talk about a competitive schedule. The Cajuns are playing this one this time out. Still think they're going to be ranked at the end of the year. But you better watch out for South Alabama. They're going to they're show up to play. Expectations are high. About as high as they've been going into a season in a long time. Now, Rob will tell the players, you had not done anything yet, it doesn't matter. But for the fan base and those that pay attention to all the preseason rankings, all the preseason All-American awards, this is about as uh, anticipated and as high expectations going into a Cajun baseball season that, uh, that, that I've seen since I've been covering the team. Question number three. What are realistic expectations for Raging Cajun softball this season? I think the expectations are what they've created over the years to win the Sun Belt, to get into a regional, and hopefully host one. You know, you've got to replace some pitching. There's a lot of young arms. Coach Lotif said they're going to figure it out as they go, and things will change throughout the season. But the expectation for this program is always to win the Sun Belt, play in a regional, and try to get to a Super and a College World Series. Now, that doesn't happen every year, but to win the Sun Belt and play in postseason, play in a regional, that's the expectation every year for this team, and uh, this year's no different. And I don't think that that necessarily is going to happen this year. Once again, let's not forget South Alabama's in the league. Let's also not forget the Cajuns didn't win the conference tournament uh, last year. They've got a lot of firepower on this team, and they're going to score a lot of runs. But there is a big, big question mark in the circle. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to figure it out, but it may take them a while to do it. And as a result, I don't know if my expectations are quite as high as a lot of folks. What are your expectations? I think they'll be in the top two in the league. I think they'll be in a regional. That's about as far as I'm going right now, though. Not too much. I didn't go too much further than that. Question number four. With Tyreek Evans undergoing a third knee surgery, what can the Pelicans do to gain anything positive from this dreadful season? Nothing. Nothing. This is a team that we expected would be a playoff team. And then the injuries hit, and hit, and hit, and hit. You can only play that next man up stuff so many times before you ain't got no next man up. They got no next man up. All, all they can do this season is maybe trade some guys that you know you're not going to have uh, long term, play for the long term gain, hit the lottery, get a good player, and try to get some of that Wolverine DNA to fix these injuries because Every single player in the NBA's knees, both of their knees are saying, please don't sign with New Orleans because something really bad's going to happen to us. Question number five. What's the best comic book series of all time? X-Men. End of story. Period. Come on. I had, to, I had to wear the shirt today for this question. It's not about one. It's about all. It deals with a lot of uh, stuff we see in society about bigotry and overcoming things and coming together. There's a lot of underlining themes other than, hey, I'm a hero and I'm just going to save everybody and only one person can hurt me. 
Superman. Because by himself, he'd kick all of the X-Men's ass. Every one of them. He, he's not even a person, Jay. Who's, who's Superman's, like, top villain? He doesn't have any. See, you know, Lex Luthor. All right. Oh, Luth, not bad. Okay. And, well, and, 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 and the one whose name you couldn't pronounce because he came from another dimension, and then the only way he could go back is you had to trick him into saying his name backwards. In the Super Bowl, Cam Newton was more Clark Kent than Superman. He just never, he never really put on the cake. Uh, okay. Superman wouldn't have had to worry about it. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's the X. No, 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 no. No, let me tell you something. Let, let me educate you here. Cam Newton said he was Superman. He ain't Superman. Only Superman is Superman. Don't put your finger in my face. That's going to do it for Fast Five. We'll see you next week, everybody. We Only Superman. It's Superman. We